really need to be careful about that. God says, love your enemies, pray for them, feed them. Don't lift your hands to me and tell me you love me when there's people out there you don't love. Give God the glory, give him all the praise, give him all the honour, and let his name be exalted. Sorry, I'm late. Uh, we're messing about today with cameras and, and different things like that. And um, I believe I'm on. I believe so. I don't know at the moment, but we'll see. I was going to say I'm in my backyard. But um, that would be a lie and I would have to repent. So praise God, give him the glory, give him all the honour and give him all the praise for everything that he is actually doing. So thank you, Jesus. Um, had a wonderful day today. I don't know if anybody's on, if it's gone on or what's going on here. I'm trying to find it now in Facebook. Um, if I can find it to see whether we are on live I believe we are on live so again I need to have the comments up um, so as I can find um, where we are because the comments are not coming up on here for some reason so oh there's a lot done Alison, Sandra, Lisa Drusilla that's a nice name. Mario, Audrey, Jimmy, James, James and the lads, lovely to see you lads. Tom, nice to see you. Lisa, Finnis, Alison, and Tony McCluck. I was going to say, I'm in my backyard. That's the view from our house, but it's not. So please don't believe it. I am still in Liverpool. You might think Liverpool's changed. This is what it's like on the docks. It's not. I've just been messing around with some some stuff. That's what all I've been doing. Just messing about just to see what's coming and what's not coming. So, <clears throat> I praise God for you. Um, you know, I've had a lovely day today. I was really encouraged. I spoke to the lads this morning. And what an encouragement they are really such an encouragement so i was really blessed by them um so i really do thank god for what he's actually doing in their lives and um, we had a good chat this morning and um, they raised some more finances um for the support that we're sending over to um, esther in pakistan so it's wednesday tomorrow on thursday lisa's gonna go over we're not sending all of the money over. We're going to send a small part of it, and next month we'll send another small part of it. Um, and we'll do it that way. Um, so what I'm asking for is anybody that's got, what I, we call it Liverpool's loads of slummy, which is pennies and, um, I was going to say sixpences and flippy bits and eightpennies and all this sort of stuff, but that's, that's what we used when I was a kid. And I still like it. I remember when I was a kid, you know, um, we used to have loads of slummy. Um, it used to be 12 pennies to a pound, to a shilling. And they were about that big. Or a bit of it, about that big. And we used to have loads of slummy. And everybody used to get holes in their pockets. And when I look back now, I know why we got loads of holes in our pockets. is because of all the slummy. So, um, 
I like Carly. It's nice to see you, Andrew. Uh, so it's nice to see you. As I say, I don't know what's going on with this, but I've been having some fun today. Um, I had fun with the lads this morning, uh, and I'll be honest with you, I got the, a big surprise. They clubbed together to send, and it doubled. It doubled the money we had to send over to Esther. And I want to thank the lads for that. Absolutely tremendous. I'm not going to send it all at once. Maybe when Lisa comes in, one of the lads, maybe whoever she picks can go over and uh, go to the bank and send. We're going to send half this month and half next month. Um, we still have to be careful. Um, and that's what I'm trying to do. Um, we get lots of scammers coming on. Um, I've had a couple over the last few weeks, a couple of weeks anyway, uh, text me and send me loads of information and, and, and different things like this. So it's a real warning really to you, for you. Uh, Stephen Ray, it's lovely to see you, Stephen. <coughs> now you might think, well, what's this got to do with Christianity? Well, this is our teaching nights primarily are on a Wednesday, a Friday, a Sunday evening. And we have a family service on a Sunday morning over the internet because we can't have it anywhere else. Um, so I want to make these nights a chat night as well, uh, where you can have interaction with me. So you've got an opportunity. Um, I've got it over the phone because it, they're not coming. I can't get them up there for some reason. So I'm looking up and I'm looking down. I'm not being disrespectful to you. I'm just to see who's asking any questions. Um, I will be speaking on 1 Peter 4, chapter 4, verse 1 to 6, but not, not just get, I just want to share this with you. Listen, I know at this particular moment <clears throat> there are people out there that need finances. I know that. Um, and we can tend to think when somebody either texts us or sends us a message on Facebook or YouTube, or any other multimedia, that this is a blessing from God. I've had two, as I say, over the last two weeks. One somebody saying that they give me £100,000, and the other one was for a million pounds. So what I say to them, I say, that's fantastic. I really bless God for you. You know, please, I, I just don't even know what to say. I really say this. Do them, text them. But the situation is, depending on, on where I feel it's coming from, I say, if you go onto our website, and there's a donation button there, if you pay into that, I'll thank God for you. But nobody's ever put money in. Um, I like Jan, nice to see you. Um, really is good to see you. Um, so please don't get watch it when people phone up even asking you to donate for something asking to sell you something whatever it is I'd want today for um, finances um, to invest um, I won't tell you what I said I was nice really nice and she started to call the scripture to me and I said that's not in scripture scripture doesn't say that anyway I got out of it and I politely said to her, I'm going to put the phone down now, so please don't be offended, but I've had enough of the conversation. Plus, Margaret was like this to me, because I play with them, you see, and God have mercy on me, and I shouldn't, but I do. Um, I think Alison's got half a video, and I've got the other half of the video, when we were doing these scammers from India. And um, if I can get Alison to send me that other half, I'll get my half and I'll put it together and I'll put it on and I'll show you. It's only about five minutes, seven minutes. I'll show you how I play along with them. But that's only because I'm interested in that sort of thing and especially praying for people that are getting scammed. Some people have got no morals and I'm really, it frustrates me that people can take money from not just young people but old people as well 
and um, I really do get frustrated with it, especially when it comes to money. And these people, I don't care what they've done in their life, whether they've been good people or not good people or whatever, whether they've given money to charity or, or, or whatever. I've got this sense of they've worked hard all their life. It took them years and years and years to pay off a mortgage. And somebody wants to come in and rip them off leave them in debt and these people want to drive around in the fancy cars i mean i can't see how they can do it myself and it just but i i do pray for them because i know that god is going to seriously judge these people i i really do know that and so i get um i'm aware of that please i'm looking down at, at, at the um things i can see different things coming up but i've got no chats um, so, so I really am aware of it and it really actually gets so frustrated and you can call it a righteous anger, I do. Um, so I love it when they phone me up um, because I play a game. Because I know if they're on with me for an hour or half an hour, they're not scamming somebody else. And that's what I like to do. Um, you might think that's unrighteous, I don't. It could have been you that you phoned instead of me. So as far as I, I'm concerned, I've saved you a lot of money. Um, so please watch out the scammers. And if somebody says they need your bank account, don't give it. Don't give it. If somebody's got a lot of money to give you, and they'll send you photographs of children, old ladies in hospitals and everything, they've left you millions of pounds and all this. So that's great. Can you just give it to the hospital? It's a scam. They're trying to get as much money out of you as possible. Stop, don't do it. Please don't do it. When you have, if you give money, whether it's, we, if we ever put something up, check us out, go to the website. Check whether it is charity. Go and get the charity number. If you go on to, <coughs> want to find out whether somebody um, belongs to a charity, how long they've been into the charity, whether the books are up to date. If you go on and put in charity number for say, for such and such of organisation, it all comes up. It's all public knowledge. It'll tell you when they started. It'll tell you what they do. It'll tell you how much they got last year in the bank. It'll tell you what they got the year before and the year before that, right? So you have to be very, very careful. It doesn't matter what charity it is. It goes up on a charity commission um, website and you can look at every charity, yeah? Now, there's some organisations that are not charity registered. They're a local community group, but you can still go onto the council websites and find out about these community groups yeah what i'm trying to do is keep you aware that there are people out there they'll come on and say that they're christians oh i love jesus i fell in love and i got one oh another one <coughs> about three weeks ago and then he said oh i've fallen in love with jesus i'm a christian um, and do that and I looked at his profile, I got up and I went onto his profile. He had a beautiful car. He had an iPhone 7, 8 or 9 or something like that. He had jewellery, he was in and out of the shops with his girlfriend. And I just wrote back and said, because he asked me, he said, we're in need, we've got no food. So me being a scout, so I just said, well, don't you think it's good if you go and sell your phone or get you into your car? Better still. You've got a girlfriend dripping with jewellery there. Get rid of it and sell the jewellery. Seriously, that's what I told him. And he come back and he said, I'm sorry. It's true. And one of the nights that we were on here, he come on to listen to the word of God. And that's because I believe he got convicted. Uh, I can... Tundal, the Akatundi. I'm sorry, forgive me for pronouncing your name. I, I, I wish Pastor Phineas was on this one. Uh, forgive me. So please, 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 I'm really 
want, want you to be aware, aware there's a lot of scammers out there and, and they, they don't care whether you've you're sick or whether you're not sick they just want what's in your bank account or what's in your pocket yeah never give under any circumstances your bank details out yeah please do not do that under any circumstances don't you send any money through a card either yeah if somebody asks for your card details you do not do that right um please 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 don't do that it, it's it's not good and i just want you to be aware and you can pass it around and tell people there's a lot of scammers out there and they're using this coronavirus to fill their pockets not your pockets and you'll think that they're coming from the tax man you'll they, you'll think that they're coming from the corona the hospitals and everything they've all got these false uh, websites <clears throat> and you pay into it and you think you're given to the hospitals you think that you're given to these good causes and in effect you're not it's going directly into their bank so please please always check up the charity and if you're unsure go to a government website or go to your local council and ask them and they will direct you to the proper one yeah because they're scamming millions it's on the news and it's on the government have warned it tonight and um, watch out for the scammers and um, they're not interested in you they're only interested in what they can get and that brings me down to to um what what i'm saying tonight before i go into the words is unfortunately as reach out ministries changing lives um, we have chosen now a a charity in pakistan and um, that we are going to support unfortunately before god we can't support absolutely everybody <coughs> excuse me um the choice and i put this i said lord i need wisdom lord because everybody needs money everybody's shown me children and they're laying on beds and they're in the gutters and everything can a lot of them are most probably genuine how I had to work this out, and I, I spoke to um, staff today, how I had to work it out how we can actually give. Who do we give to? And it took us about four or five weeks, maybe six weeks, to figure out who we're actually going to um, give finances to. And I worked it on this basis. I had a tremendous amount of people phoning me up and they had a tremendous amount of people messaging me and texting me and the first thing that these people said can you send us money now forgive me if i'm wrong um that wasn't the way god wanted me to work this so i had one person well, I've had a couple of pe people, but I've had one person, um, and there's another person, I'm waiting for them to come back on, I will message him. Uh, we won't help him every month, but we will help once, maybe twice. But there's a young lady, Aina Esther, that's been on, and I, for months, um, I was supposed to be over going over next week or the week after to do a, a, a conference, speak at a conference for her. And they support me going over there. Um, so I know that they didn't want me for what I could give them. They wanted the word of God preached over there. So they were willing to sacrifice finances to get me over there. Unfortunately, I couldn't go. I will go. Um, when? I just don't know. So I've made the choice, Adam uh, Chelton, it's nice to see you. So I've made the choice, um, I've spoke to Lisa, um, I haven't spoke to Pastor Finney, so Pastor Isaac at the moment, but they, I'm sure they trust me. And so this is the way I've done it. 
Esther never asked me for nothing. And a couple of months ago, I was, she asked me, would I pray for people over there? I didn't realize that they were in the villages and they got me on FaceTime and I was praying on FaceTime for these families. And even in that, they said they had needs. She never asked me for one, one penny. And she's never asked me up to this day for one penny. And so, and she's on here every night listening to the word of God from everybody that preaches. And she doesn't ask for anything. So I feel that that's um, Ian McCann. Nice to see you. That's who I feel um, God wants us to support. So uh, she's not on yet at the moment. Um, I don't know where she is, uh, but she's definitely not on at the moment. So please, we're going to do that. And again, I thank the lads because uh, I had a word with them this morning. I was uh, on Skype talking to the lads at the centre. And unbeknown to me, they'd gone away, I'd gone away because we'd raised 90 odd pound, 100 pound, and they doubled that, more than doubled it. They had the whip around themselves. And they doubled that for these children in Pakistan. So I want to publicly thank you. And these, these are lads that don't get a lot of money. I mean, if they give a pound or two pound, that, that's a lot of money to them. They don't get a lot of money because they're in a rehab centre. So I want to thank God for them. I want to thank God for the staff. I want to thank God for everybody that comes on and supports the channel. <coughs> Excuse me. I really do because um, you may think you're getting uplifted. I'm actually getting uplifted by being able to come here and to preach the word of God. So I really do thank Jesus for this opportunity. I've spoke to people today from um, different parts of the country, friends of mine as well. And we're not the only ones going through it. I mean, I know people that are going through dreadful things, absolutely dreadful things. Um, and in the time of watching that or listening to a sermon or listening to debates and things that's going on because I need to be stimulated. Um, I look at everything that's going on and I think, God, I'm really blessed. I'm really, really blessed. Not that I'm rich and not. Um, I'm the same as everybody else. I have to pay bills and, and all this kind of stuff. Um, and, it's, you know, I've missed the mortgage sometimes. I've missed me not car paying because I've had this car. This was it, it donated to me. And I've missed different things. So I'm the same as everybody else. That's the way we are. So we do this for the love of Christ, not for the money. Um, and my way of thinking is at the staff at the centre, and we need to get keep getting them paid. I'm not asking for money. We need to keep getting them paid. Um, and we need to keep reaching out to people. That's the main objective for what I'm actually doing now. And it was like, I was thinking, and as, as I said, I think I told you last, last week, I got up at three o'clock in the morning and I, I couldn't sleep. For some reason, I woke, woke up and I just couldn't get back to sleep. And as soon as I stepped out of bed, God had me praying for somebody. Because as soon as I got out of bed, I said, Lord, is this doing any better? Is this being beneficial for your kingdom by preaching every night, by being there, by talking during the day to people, by whatever I'm doing? And it was about, sorry, tell it must have been, two, yeah, it was some between three, three and quarter past three, something like that. Um, I got a, a, a message from somebody um, on the other side of the world. And this is what they said. They said, the preaching and teaching we get from you, we share to groups around our country. And that was like, for me, that was an eye-opener that God was listening. 
And that was in within five or ten minutes. So no matter what you and I are doing, it is beneficial for God's kingdom to preach the word of God. Yeah? It doesn't matter how much we preach it, how less we preach it, as long as we preach it. <coughs> Listen, I don't believe in great preachers and not great preachers. I believe when somebody's preaching the word of God, they're preaching the word of God. Right? I'm okay for some people. Some people pff, don't want to know. I know great preachers, they're okay for some people. Some people just don't want to know. We can't please all the people all the time. We're just not going to be able to do that. Yeah? Uh, but what I hope that we do, or we do, and I believe we do, we preach the truth. Uh, and my ambition in God is that you become disciples and not just converts. Because because God has called us to be, to disciple and not to make converts. So for me, it's very important. Um, all of this, every every bit of it, it's so so important that God gets the glory in absolutely everything. <coughs> if you wish to ask a question, please put it down. I will try and find it. Um, Sean, I believe you asked the question today. I'll answer that during the week. And Lee, you asked the question as well um, this morning. I will answer that during the week as well, if you don't mind. But because I've had this, I've got another scripture that I want to speak on. It's 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 1 to 6. And um, so it's been up there, and I'll always put these scriptures now. I'll always put them up there so you can see them on the bottom left. Um, of the screen right therefore since Christ suffered for us in the flesh arm yourselves also with the same mind for he who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin that he no longer or she no longer live the rest of their time in the flesh for the lusts of men but for the will of God for we have spent enough time, enough of our past lifetime in doing the will of the Gentiles or the will of the world, what they do out there. When we walked in drunkenness, lust of the flesh, partying, drinking, all kinds of abominable stuff, absolute lot of rubbish. In regard to these, they think it's strange that you do not run with them in the same flood of dispensation, speaking evil of you, they will give an account to him who is ready to judge the living and the dead. For this reason, the gospel was preached also to those who are dead, that they might be judged according to men in the flesh, but live according to God and his spirit. <coughs> so, Listen, I remember when I first become a Christian and I come back to Liverpool, we were living in Lincolnshire. I used to travel abroad all over the place um, to work. And um, Mark and I, we moved to Lincolnshire. Uh, we had our door first daughter before we went down. And we moved down to a place called Lincolnshire. That's where we met the Lord. We were looking for them. We went to Jehovah's Witnesses. We went everywhere. We were looking before we moved there to find out truth. Anyway, we moved to Lincolnshire and Margaret comes to know Jesus a year before me. And lots of things went on and I'm not going to share all that, that with you now. Um, and then we moved back to Liverpool. I went off to Bible College in 1990 or 91. Um, that was the first Bible College I went to. And God said to me while I was there, I want you to go home. I'm sending you to a place of not, of not unfamiliar language. So I knew it was Liverpool because I was in England. And the next day, Margaret phoned me up and said, God has told us to move. So I had three months left to go in this Bible college of this, this one of the semesters. And when we got home, we packed up within a few days and we were in Liverpool. 
And when I got to Liverpool, my family thought I'd gone off my head. They thought we'd lost the plot because we were talking about Jesus. We were going to church. We were praying for people. Um, we weren't doing the things that they were doing anymore. We weren't going to pubs and clubs and everything that goes with it. We, we, we had totally turned around. Not to say that we didn't fall back sometimes, but we turned around. We started to realise who Christ was in our lives. And not just who Jesus was, but the breaking point for me personally was knowing what he'd done and trying to get the realisation in my spirit of what he'd done on that cross. I'm still working on that, by the way. Oh, I know he died for me on the cross and I know he took all my sins and he took all my griefs and my pain and everything. I know all of that. But there's far more to Jesus that I truly want to know. It's weird. I want to know Jesus as a person. I know we say he's our friend, he's our father, he's our brother, he's everything to us. It's okay, it's easy to say that. I personally want to feel that. I want it to be so real in my life that I can feel him, I can taste him, I know he's there by the power of his Holy Spirit. I know he's there. Sometimes I know pastors, we get up to preach, and sometimes I come away and think, God, what on earth did I say that for? Why? That was not on what I've been studying. And I come away and you're all down, all of a sudden somebody goes, wasn't that brilliant? I'm thinking, I don't know where he's been, he ain't been listening to me. I've gone into churches and I've been sitting there and I'm thinking, Lord, I want to go. And I've stood up and the person next to me said, wasn't that fabulous? I've never heard a word like that. I'm thinking, have we been in the same meeting? Do you see how God works? I might be for you tonight, and I may be not. You might click off and go somewhere, and that's praise the Lord. I give Jesus all the glory. What I say to you is listen to what God has to say. Listen to what God has to say. And that's what I started to do. I started to listen and I started to read and think, what was it like, Jesus? You went through all that pain. You went through all of that. You were nailed to that cross in pain. God, please forgive me because without you, I could never go through anything like that. I'm talking about willingly now. Oh, yes, somebody can grab us and nail us to the cross and we have to go through. But I'm talking about willingly. Total difference now. Can you and I lay our lives down for somebody that dislikes us, that hates us, that wants to get rid of us? Can you and I pray for people that hate us, that hate our families tremendously? Can we love our enemies? Can we pray for our enemies? This is what I ask God all the time. I said to God once, I'll come back to the scripture in a minute. I said to God once, God, my heart's no good. I can't love these people like you love them. I need you to give me a heart transplant. I need your heart to be able to love the people that don't love me. And that can't stand me. I need you to work that in my life. Because without you working it in my life, Lord God, I am un 
fruitful for your kingdom. I want to be like you were when you're on the cross. Father, forgive them for they don't know what to do. Father, help them. Stephen, I see Jesus at the right hand of the Father. Forgive them, Father. I want to get to that place in my life where the power of God and his love and grace and mercy is just pouring out of me. I truly want to know what it is to love my enemies. Yeah. Are you sure you want to be a Christian? And Christian means Christ-like. And this is what happened when I, my family, my friends in Liverpool, they knew what I was like. When I come back from Lincolnshire and moved back to Liverpool many years ago, many, I think it was 1993, something like that, and they seen a different person. They would, I would go to their house and they would sit there and they would sit like that watching me. It was a bit disconcerting sometimes. And I'd say, what are you doing? They said, we're waiting for you to come back. I said, come back away. We want you. We like you better the way you was than what you are now. I'd say, I'm not going to change. I've fallen in love with Jesus. Full stop. Cheerio, I have to go now. And if he started swearing and all this, I'd walk in, say hello, cheerio, and walk out. You might find that disrespectful. I didn't want to be around that. I didn't want to be around it. I was not super spiritual. But I didn't want to be around that, even if that was my own family. Anyway, it worked out that a lot of my family got saved. Thank you, Jesus. A lot of my nieces and nephews are in with the Lord. Praise Jesus. That's because I wouldn't compromise the gospel. I'm not talking about bashing the gospel out. I'm talking about Christ called me to walk like he walks. And that's what I was doing. That's why when Peter says here, they find it strange when we don't go back into the world with them. Doing the same things. Listen, this was written a couple of thousand years ago. This is a manual for the way we are, you and I should live now. It's not out of date, it's in date and there's still new stuff in it. Too late. It's the best-selling book in the universe. There's no other book ever outsold it. The words of it give us life. There's no other book out there in the world, in the universe, that will give you and I life. My fingers keep going there, look, don't they? <laughs> I could say I'm a magician. <laughs> well, I don't... There's no other book out there that will give us life. Every word in here, we can chew on in our spirits and we can get life. We don't have to be dead in spirits. We can be alive in spirit. Let me read it again. Therefore, since Christ suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves also with the same mind. For he who has suffered in the flesh has ceased to sin. Now, how can he... How can Peter make a statement like that when you and I still sin? Please don't say you do. You don't sin. We do sin. It might not be we're going out there doing bank robberies and all this kind of stuff and <coughs> whatever we do and we used to do. But we sin. Welcome to Christianity. Anybody that says they don't sin, they're a liar. That's what God says. Now, how can we do that? It's easy. The gospel is truly 
easy. Don't make it complicated for yourselves or for one another. Listen, Jesus died on that cross that you and I may be set free and have eternal life with him. All he's called you and I to do is call on the name of Jesus and we will be saved. He sanctifies us. He makes us holy. It's by his grace. He puts mercy over us and he takes us into the presence of God for what he done on that cross by shedding that blood for us. He is the blood sacrifice for us. And that's how you and I get into heaven. That's how you and I get into the presence of God. And I'm speaking to a very, very close friend um, this morning. And I said to her, you and I don't deserve anything. She said, but I want to get into the presence of God. I said, you are not out of the presence of God. We cannot make statements like that. If God lives inside of us, how can we be out of his presence? We can be out of fellowship with him, but we're still there. He doesn't take his Holy Spirit from us. I know some people say, well, it says in Psalms, that King David said, don't take your Holy Spirit from me. There's a total difference. Let me tell you the difference. The difference between the Old Testament and the New Testament Old Testament was law. We're under grace and what Jesus done for us. Right? The Old Testament Jews or anybody Old Testament that was once of God, they're going to be judged by the law. From where Jesus come, you and I are judged by whether we accept them or reject them. Old Testament Holy Spirit only came over them. New Testament, Jesus comes into us by his Holy Spirit. Do you see the difference? God doesn't take his Holy Spirit away from you. See, when God looks upon you and I, he looks on us and he sees Jesus. It's like Jesus is standing before him and he's transparent and he looks at me and he says, there's my son. And if I do something wrong, I just say, Father, please, Jesus, forgive me. And as soon as I've said it, if I've said it with a, a pure heart, I'm telling you, he's forgiven me and he forgets it. Don't keep asking for forgiveness for the same sin because he's forgotten it. And every time you keep going up for the same sin, God, forgive me, God, forgive me, God, forgive me. He says, what for? I forgive you years ago for that. Why are you bringing that up again? I forgot it. Jesus died for it that he would forget it. It's gone. It's finished with. It's been crucified. You have been set free. You and I, when we come to judgment, we've already been judged by his death and his resurrection. And when we stand before God, we're going to be just for what we've not done for God. That's when the rewards are coming in. Come on, Christians. Grab hold of what's getting said. God loves you. God wants to talk to you. God wants a relationship with you. God wants you to keep digging in and standing in faith. Just Believe. That's what he's calling you and I to do. Just believe. That's what God's called us to do. Stand. You and I are immovable. The enemy can't do anything to us that God does not allow. And let me say this. God will allow the enemy to come in in our lives. How does he do it? It's like when um, Satan goes before the throne of God. Now, I don't know whether he goes directly to the throne of God or whether he's somewhere else, but he goes to heaven and he stands before God. How do I know that? Because in Revelation, he stands there 
And he's telling God what a bad people we are, that we're sinners. This is what's going to happen, <coughs> I believe. I'm going to go before God. The devil's going to be there. Jesus is going to be there. And he's going to be the accuser of the bread. And this is what he's going to say. God, I told you about this person, Colin. You put him in as a pastor and a leader in your kingdom, and he was a sinner. And he done this, and he done that, and he done this, and he done that, and he done the other. That's what he done in your kingdom. He's a sinner, and he needs to go to hell. And God's going to say, Do you know, you're right. You're right. He does need to be punished in an eternal punishment. And Jesus is going to go, Father, may I step forward. And Jesus is going to stay and he's going to pick me up because I'm going to be on the floor and the floor I'm going to be crying and everything. And he's going to pick me up. He's going to put his arms around me. And he's going to say, Father, I died for him. This is my son. And he's going to take this cloak, cloak of righteousness and he's going to put it on me. And God's going to look at me and he's going to come and he's going to say, come in, well done faithful servants. And he'll turn to the devil and say, have you got anything else to say about my son? And Jesus is going to look at him waiting for him to say so. And God's going to say, come in, well done faithful servants. Is that because of these areas? No, that's because I don't deserve it. And the only reason I'm gonna, that's going to happen is because Jesus died for me and I accept that with all my heart. Do I deserve it? Not a chance. Does anybody deserve it? Not a chance. So my, I've got a couple more minutes because I started 10 minutes later. Can I ask you this? Can I say this to you? Listen, if there's anybody out there, I'm not asking you to do something out of the ordinary. I am really. I'm asking you to do me a favour. If you don't believe in God, if you don't believe in Jesus, yeah, I'm not going to send you to ask your family or other Christians to show you who he is. I'm not going to say go to a pastor, go to a priest, go to a vicar. I'm not going to say anything like that. I'll say to you what I sell people on the streets. Don't ask me. Why don't you go directly to God and ask him to prove himself to you? I want to give you an opportunity. If you want to ask these questions of God, I'm going to pray in a minute. It's not a biblical thing that I'm doing. It's not in the Bible that we do this. I'm doing this because I'm not God. I'm not what they call omnipresence. That means everywhere at the same time. I need to know people's hearts. So I do this. So if there's anybody with you, they hear you and they can accept what you're saying and they can lead you even deeper into God and to a church and, and to everywhere. So I just ask you to say a prayer with me. And I'll say it with you, and I'm sure there's other people on tonight that say it. <coughs> if there's any Christians that have backslidden slightly or whatever, um, get back into God. If you've got big issues in your life, whatever it is, God wants to deal with the situation. God will never take you away and take you out of anything. He never does that. God always comes into the situation. Psalm 23 verse 5. He comes into the situation. And that's where he deals with us. He never takes us out. So don't start praying, God get me out of this. God get me out of this marriage. Sorry. 
Stig Wille. You are married to a nice woman, or she was nice when you first married her. You with her. You are married to a husband. Tough. You with him. The children you've got, they're yours. They're who God gave you or has loaned you. Children or youth or young people, whatever you want to be called. Let me tell you, your friend's parents may seem a little bit better, but let me tell you, they're not. God's put you and give you the parents that you need to get on in your life. He gave me the parents that I needed to get me to where I am today. And I had half the half the upbringing, really bad and really good from my mum. So I always thank God for my life, the good and the bad, because it's got me to where I am today. And I realise now that Christ took me through it to make me who I am today. So the please don't pray to get out of a relationship. And if you're trying to get out of a relationship with your wife or your husband, you're wrong. I'll tell you what to do. You ask God to bring such love there, agape love, and you fall in love with your wife or you fall in love with your husband all over again. Start to talk to each other. Start to pray with each other. Listen to each other. You may go out to work and your wife's cleaned the house and picked the children up and fed the children, done your clothes and absolutely everything. She may, you, you may think she's got a mundane job, so when you sit there and she says something, even if it's talking about washing the dishes, smile and tell her she's done a fantastic job. It could be the opposite way around. But tell each other they've done a fantastic job. Always tell your children that you love them. Always tell your wife or your husband that you love her. We have to first confess. We have to fall in love with each other again. Yeah? We've got to understand all of this. God's not going to go and give you another wife. You want another wife because you want a dolly bear to go down and roll with. You wouldn't be able to keep up with her, mate, so don't worry about it. And she wouldn't be able to keep up with him. You're getting too old for it now. Yeah. Grow old gracefully. Yeah. Jesus doesn't bring us together to break us up. We break ourselves up. Don't tell me it's God, because it's not. And we took a vow before God, for better or for worse. Yeah? And if you think she's getting old, or she thinks you're getting old, go and look at yourself in the mirror. You know all the pain. I'm telling you straight on that one. Yeah, no all pain. Absolutely not. So I thank God for that. So let me say this prayer. <clears throat> you can ask me questions, you can ask other Christians questions, but I'd like you to go direct to God now and ask him. So I'm going to pray this prayer, simple prayer. We're going to take communion. Then I want to have a last prayer with you. But whatever God wants me to pray for, I want to do that. So I'm going to pray. You might think it's a bit churchy, the kind of prayer. Because I go churchy sometimes, and that's the way it is. So that means I say church things like, Lord Jesus, and, oh, and I, you know, you might think I'm off your rocker. I am, to be honest with you. I'm so in love with Jesus. My wife is so in love with Jesus. My children are so in love with Jesus. And I've always taught them, love Jesus more than you ever love me. And we're teaching that to our grandchildren now. 
Oh, we know that he loves us. But I want that agape love. I want to see my children, my grandchildren, and my great grandchildren, my great 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 grandchildren coming to heaven. I'm looking to see what family I've got. I'm looking forward to meeting a family that have met with Jesus before even me. In my family. Jesus, thank you. I don't know what this... What's really, I don't fully understand. But I know I really do want to go to heaven when I die. And I don't want to go to hell. I don't know whether I'm frightened or I'm excited. I don't know. But I want to do what this fella said. I want to ask you, Jesus. I want you to prove yourself to me. I'm asking for you to come into my life and change me. I'm sorry about my life before. I, I didn't know what was really right and what was really wrong. In a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff I knew. But what I want to do now is I want a relationship like he's got. I really want to love my family. And I find that difficult to do. I've broke up with all my family. You know what? I'm asking you to bring it all back that I've personally broke. So I'm trusting in what he said. And I'm asking you, Jesus, to come into my life and prove yourself that I may be similar and know the truth of who you really are. Amen. Easy. Nothing difficult about that, is it? I promise you one thing. If you've said the prayer as easy as that, God wants you and I to be really truthful. He knows you and I better than we know each other. And we know ourselves. Don't let your prayers be complicated with God. I don't keep on praying and praying and praying and praying and praying. I can say one word from there and it moves mountains. That's the way God is. We're going to take communion and I'd like to pray for you, for people that, um, if you're sick, if you, you need finances, if your family's broken up and you want to get your family back, I want to pray for other ministries, um, uh, Natasha's on from um, Sowing Seeds. I want to pray for them, Sowing Seeds. Um, Brian and Stella. I want to pray for them in Stockton. I want to pray for, for our ministry, Patel, and these kind of people. For me, these are real people. And God chooses the foolish things of this world, like us. This is who he chooses. It doesn't mean we're stupid. He chooses us because he knows we're going to push through. That's what the Christianity is about. It's about pushing through. Okay, Father, I ask you in the name of Jesus. Sorry I didn't finish off all the scripture. I just don't know why. You know, sometimes I just like to share what's on my heart. How I've been feeling, and I want you to know I'm real. I fall short the glory of God all the time. All the time. But I know that Jesus forgives me. And I know I've died with him on that cross. I know that. I know he's forgiven me. I know I'm going to go to be with him in heaven. I know. I know he loves me. I know I love him. I know he has a plan and a purpose for my life. I don't need people to prophesy over my life to know what God's doing. I know what God's doing because I've got a relationship with him. And I can tell you a lot more, but I'm not going to. 
Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus. Father, we come to take bread, uh, break bread as your body was broken for each one of us. Father, you suffered before the cross and you suffered on the cross where your body was absolutely shattered. I can't even imagine the pain that you went through. I have to be honest, Lord God, I find that uh, so difficult to even imagine. So, Lord, I truly, Jesus, I thank you for going through that pain for me. And when you went 2,000 years ago, you were thinking about me now. So I thank you, Jesus, and I give you the glory, the honour, and the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to play a song. Excuse me. I play this every time, but, but this is one of my favourite songs. It's not long, it's a minute. It's a... Father, I ask you, Jesus, mighty name. Thank you for your blood that was shed for each one of us. Thank you that on the cross, Lord God, you forgave us. Thank you that on the cross, Lord God, you took all of our pain, all of our sin on your shoulders. And you paid the price for us, Lord God. God, I am so grateful. One time, Lord God, I was an enemy against you. And yet you accepted me. I shed your blood. So, Father God, I give you all your blood. I give you all your blood. I give you all your blood. Father, in Jesus' name, I ask you. That is taking you and doing this and that one day you're going back to the world. And that one day you're going to be that So Father, may you be exalted through the death and resurrection of your Son Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise Jesus. Now let me pray. I know I've gone over, well I, I haven't really, I started a little bit later. Father, I thank you. I thank you for sowing seeds for Graham and Natasha, Lord God, and their children. Father, thank you for all the staff there as well. I ask, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Father, that the power of your Holy Spirit flows out and touches that ministry, Lord God. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that, Father, you gather people to come around them. You gather people to come and hear your word. You gather people to be fed. You gather people around these people, Lord God. Father, physically, spiritually, Father, financially, you help that ministry, Lord God. Father, I, I really do pray and I ask that you bless them in Jesus' name. Father, I pray for Brian and Stella, the Moses Project. Father, and what you're doing in the Moses Project. Father, they're so busy. I ask, Lord God, that health-wise you keep Brian and Stella fit, Lord God. Father, I ask that you give them wisdom and discernment to carry on the work that you've got for them, Lord God. Father, bless them physically and financially and spiritually as well, Lord God. Father, I pray for Batel. I pray for... Us as well, Lord, that the ministry reach out and change in lives. I pray for every other ministry that I don't know, Lord God. But I pray, Lord God, that by the power of your Holy Spirit, you minister to us and through us, Lord God. Father, that you give us wisdom, that you give us discernment, Lord God. Father, I'm asking in the name of Jesus that you come into our lives and that you change it, Lord God. Change each one of us. In Jesus' name, amen. I don't know who this is for. I'm just going to put this out. 
just give me a word of what God showed me in the spirit there. But as I pray, God shows me things where the people believe it or not. I'm not interested. I'm just telling you what God's put out. And I don't know where the older generation will know. It's like you build a fire and it burns and burns and burns. Underneath, we get what's called these ashes. Right? Now, if you leave them ashes in, you won't be able to set a fire up because it needs it needs um, it needs draft underneath it to keep them coals or that wood burning. So we have to get rid of the ash that's underneath. And I believe God for me, this is for me as well. I believe what God's saying is get rid of the dross, get rid of the ash, so we the power so the power can come underneath and bring and set them coals of that wood logs on fire and that's what I think God's doing he was showing me a shovel that we were shoveling out and we used to do this every morning especially with my grandmother and my mum and we clean the fire out shovel it get all the ash out and things like that so then they could build a fire and there's some stuff in your life in my life in all of our lives that what is what God's saying you can build a fire but you can't build it on top of the ash that's underneath because there's no air to it there's no power to it so we have to clean it out then we set it on light and then the holy spirit can come in and he can set it all ablaze again you and i can't live off the past this is a new thing each day is a new day so get rid of all the old stuff and start asking god to give us some of the new stuff may god bless you May the, his desires in your life grow and may they be fulfilled. Father, bless each person. Father, the person needs to be healed there, Lord God, wherever they are all over the world right now. Father, I ask that you touch them. Father, that you heal anything in their life right now, Lord God. Father, I've just seen this. Father, I pray for Isaac, Lord God. I pray for his mum and his dad. I pray, Lord God, that you touch them. I pray for Janie's mum and family, Lord God. I pray for all of them, Lord God. I pray that you bless this family, Lord God, richly. Father, I also pray for Vera and their family, Lord God. I pray that you touch them right now, Lord God, that you comfort them, that you bless them. I thank you for eyes of coming on there and remind me. He hasn't said this. I just come on and said it because I've seen them and uh, I love them. I love his preaching, and many people tell me, you're better than me, you know. You're better than Pastor Phineas. <laughs> and I'm only kidding, only kidding, only kidding. But listen, come on, I don't know who's on tomorrow night, I'll see Pastor Phineas or uh, Pastor Isaac when they're ready to come on. Um, see when they want to come on. And what fabulous words. We're getting such good teaching. Such good teaching. It's unbelievable. So keep coming. God bless you. Speak to you again. See you. Bye-bye. Praise the Lord.